on Twitch just in case anybody tunes in with questions. Okay. Um, so, hi, if anyone's watching, uh, my name's Karina. I'm coming at you from the Game Dev Cafe with another interview with um, a real life game dev. So this is something that we get asked to do a lot. We've done a couple dozen now get to know a game dev features on our site, but we're starting to do them in person because it's been really fun and we have a lot of cool game devs to interview, such as today's subject, Jen. Um, you might know her as the fantastic Jen on Twitter. And she is coming to us live from, I guess, are you in Toronto right now? Um, I'm at home in Milton, oh, near lovely. Toronto. Yay, Milton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar with Milton. Um, okay. That's the beauty of, of having the internet set up this way, is we can all be at home, as you can see, doing these interviews live. So thanks for joining us today, Jen. Um, I came to know you, I guess, through a couple different events. Um, I've seen you online. You're actually a really cool Twitter account to follow. Uh, for everyone watching, you know, we'll make sure that we put these links up live, um, both on our Twitch and also on the Game Dev Cafe afterwards. Um, but yeah, she's a great Twitter account to follow. Also um, heavily involved in this year's Different Games Festival, which was, um, I think, the first time in Toronto, but it's not a new festival. Um, really cool offering of games, and, and one of them being Monster Girls Gainerations that we're going to look at today. Um, now, I know that this was um, sort of a game that was done I guess, I want to say off the top of your head, but it's not finished yet either. So it's sort of work in progress still, no audio quite yet. Um, but Jen, you know, was part of a team that made this. Um, we'll give a little shout out just by first name to Kiana, Shepard, Yanni, um, also someone who's going to be helping with their audio named Jesse. Again, we'll link this all up to you, but there's a team behind this game. Um, Jen, we're really lucky to get to talk to you today. So thanks. Yeah, yeah so no, thank much. you. Yay. Um, now I know there's a few things that I want to ask you about in terms of your career and everything like that, but you know, just to start off, what was sort of your role on this game, and generally, what's sort of your role when it comes to the game dev industry? Um, well, for this game, uh, I was mostly I served as a writer, and cool. like, so I guess I was like kind of the narrative, like one of the narrative designers, anyways, for this game. So like, I wrote uh, like most of the intro, and then. Um, Two of the romance plot lines were written by me, so I wrote the werewolf line and the witch line, and then Shepard wrote the other two and part of the intro as well. Ah, very cool. Now, is writing something that you normally do for games, or is this just one area that you're sort of dabbling in? Because I understand that you're a student at the game design program, which is yeah. broad and covers a lot of different areas. Uh, so is writing sort of your gig? Uh, kind of yes, because like before I entered the program, uh, I did journalism and I had been writing oh, cool. before that too. Yeah, so I have a, quite a background in writing. So but that's cool. I, yeah, so but I do like for other projects, like I do other stuff too. Like sometimes writing isn't like um, required for it for the game. So like I dabble in a bit of programming and yeah, that's usually what I do in design as well probably helps as a writer to have some of those more, uh, I don't know if technical is the right word, but some of those, you know, deeper skills, especially for the game development industry. Um, as a journalist, was there something in particular that you were sort of aspiring to do or, or a certain job that you really wanted? Or was that just a personal interest that happened to lead you here? <laughs> um, I kind of joined the, like, I did the journalism program. Like, I, like, it was a two-year program I completed and stuff like that. And I wanted to do, like, games journalism. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so, like, pretty much, like, when I started the program, I was like, that's what I want to do. And mm -hmm. then, um, like, while I was in the program, I kind of lost interest in being a journalist. So I was like, well, I like games, and I like writing about them, and I like writing. So it's like, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll try the game design program that was also offered at Sheridan. So I applied for that and I was lucky to get in. Very cool. And is there anything um, about the Sheridan program that attracted you? Or obviously it's really well known and there's been a lot of very successful people to go through it. Um, is it something that you had always had your eye on or was there something at that time that was being offered that attracted you? Um, I think mostly what like, uh, attracted me to the program was I was already familiar with Sheridan because I would I was going there already for journalism so ah, okay gotcha um yeah so I was just like okay, and I got an opportunity to talk to like like the program coordinator at the time and like he got me like really interested in the program and uh told me that like I was under the impression that I had to be a programmer or an artist when I signed up and he's like, no, no, you don't have to be you can you can be a designer too and like oh, you interesting can do writing and I'm like oh okay so this is good for me then it was it was the only good uh the only game design program i actually applied to like uh -huh. i didn't i didn't look 
at any other schools. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just uh, Sheridan that I had applied to. And, well, yeah. It's a nice fit, especially if you're already there. Yeah. Um, for anybody just tuning in, I just want to mention, if you do have a question, you can put it in the chat. We'll try to get to it. And if we can't today, you know, Jen, we can always forward some to you. I'm sure you're happy to answer a few questions, especially if yeah. they're on topic. Um, but yeah, we do have, um, you know, a few, I guess a few weird questions for you. Um, you know, you mentioned that a lot of people, you know, or I guess yourself included, assumed that you sort of had to have a certain discipline in order to get into this game design program. I think a lot of people think that about games in general. Um, Is there anything weird or, you know, particularly different about the game development experience that you would share with other people? Maybe something that they don't expect or just anything weird about your role in particular that people might not know? Um, I definitely wasn't anticipating the amount of flowcharts I would be looking at. Like... (laughs) Like, especially for, like, like even if it's, like, like a linearish game, like, if you have, like, any kind of choices, it's, like, branching flowcharts, and so there's so many, and I'm just like, oh, man, I was not expecting this. <laughs> it gets complex. I agree, and most of your games, I think, are a little bit more complex when it comes to the story branching um, than others. I mean, they're fairly narrative, um, but... You know, you can imagine even how some of the simplistic open world games, how many options, you know, they try to build on. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good point, though. Um, so <laughs> many flowcharts. Not the most fun part, I gather, but um, but important, very important to game dev. Is this something that you kind of wanted to always do? I mean, entering into journalism, but you mentioned that you were kind of into game journalism. So were video games always, like, a thing for you as a kid? No, I actually got into, like, being a gamer like rather late in my life I guess. <laughs> like I didn't get interested until I was like 17. Okay that's yeah, yeah I guess so, later than most sure. Yeah yeah so like I didn't grow <laughs> I didn't grow up with games like whatsoever um I just like was like a friend of mine was like oh watch this like let's play or this was like back when like let's playing video games on YouTube was just becoming a thing. So he's like oh watch this and I was like wow this game he's played looks really fun I want to play it so I bought it. Interesting. And, what game yeah. was it? Do you mind? It, it was uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, but it wasn't out at the time, so I ah. bought the second game. Interesting. <laughs> I played that. It, it was, it, I played it on PC, and Brotherhood wasn't out on PC yet, so I was like, oh, I'll just play the second game, because that one looks good, too. And then, See, it's but, proof that Let's Play sell games. See? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it worked. It worked. I, I played it on my really crummy laptop, but like... <laughs> hey, you take what up. you can get, especially at 17, I, I remember... Um, And was that sort of a big entry point for you then, just into getting interested in games? Or, you know, did you have friends who were sort of influencing you? Or, you know, what what sort of carried you on to want to pursue it as a career? Um, Well, at that time, most of my friends were not gamers. Interesting, Um, okay. Yeah, so, like, (laughs) I I was kind of just, like, doing my own thing. And then, like, I signed up on, like, Tumblr and stuff like that. And I found more people that were interested in games. Um, I had a Twitter, but, like... I'd never used it because I couldn't find anybody. So I just like (laughs) mostly on Tumblr, I was like, oh, I found people that I like games. I made friends with them and like we like shared more games with each other. They recommended me games. I recommended them games. And that's kind of like how I really got stuck into um, playing games and being a gamer, I guess. And then, yeah. And then um, I was like, oh, I'm going to do journalism because I'm good at writing. So it's like, oh, but I do game journalism. So (laughs) it all comes together. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) So I guess now that you're making games, is it is journalism still something that you would be interested in pursuing? Like, would we ever see you blogging or or working with a gaming outlet? Or is at this point, are you or games outlet? Are you more interested in sort of the creative process? I guess at this point. I'm I'm definitely more interested in like making games rather than doing games journalism. Um, but, like, sometimes I think about, like, well, maybe I'll do, like, a vlog one day or something like that. Like, <laughs> when you have time, right? Vlog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, sometimes funny. I'll, like, post, like, a review on Twitter and be like, oh, I loved Journey because it made me cry. That's why I like following your account, is you do actually give a lot of insight into other games that you're playing, which is, um, you know, basically what a journalist does. So, good job. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, thank you. But, I mean, one of the reasons that we're talking to you is that you do make games. So I'm, I'm curious about um, the game that we're looking at right here, uh, which is um, effectively a dating simulator, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, what was some of the, the inspiration behind this? Like, you know, I hate to say, like, why monsters, why generations, but, uh, but yeah, why? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, 
it was just kind of like an out there idea. We were just having yeah. fun with it. So it's like, oh, they can date monsters and it's a lesbian dating sim. Like it's it was an out there idea. So like I guess that was like made us enthusiastic about the whole thing. And totally. <laughs> it's so crazy. Well, especially yeah. when you're doing the writing, you know that it's going to lend itself to some different kind of stories. Um, I really like the artwork too. So I'm curious which kind of comes first for you in the development process. Is it some of the writing components for this kind of game or would it be the artwork inspiring the writing? Is there no real answer to that? Cause it just depends. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really remember, but I think it was like, it was more like a simultaneous thing. Like one of the first things we did was we developed the characters. So like we came up with the personalities and then like, um, we and like we had like reference pictures and then our artists like pretty much just like sketched out like like what the characters would look like and then it kind of happened like simultaneously like we were writing while uh, the art was being made we had it had to be like that because we made the game in two weeks like the initial uh. product so like we couldn't just like really <laughs> like waste time on it right so gotcha and was that done on a deadline because it was a project you were doing at school or was it part yeah. of a game jam ah okay yeah, it, was, it was a school project just one sec you can probably hear a dog barking i'm gonna <laughs> so the challenges of working at home you see sorry about that yeah, um, no worries. so this was part of a program at sheridan i gather yeah it was uh in yifat's class um cool. for the last assignment uh it was pretty much like a free-for-all so it's like make whatever you want so long as it like applies like what we've learned in this class and so it's like okay let's make a dating sim <laughs> so, yeah because like none of the other classes that we have would ever let us do that so oh i see hey yeah it's that like, makes sense you have, to have like you have to have like a certain amount of programming it's like you have to do this you have to do this it's like we had like there was like it was a free-for-all so it's like we could do whatever we wanted very so, cool yeah. Yeah. Which is sometimes where the cool ideas come from. Um, and for those watching, Yifat is the organizer of different games, correct? Yeah. Awesome. Um, we'll link, obviously, to the festival so you guys can see. Um, so this game was actually introduced to me in person at that festival. I've heard about it online beforehand, but I hadn't had a chance to play it. How does it play um, sort of in real life versus privately online? Like, do you notice that people you know interact with each other while they play it is it is it still sort of an intimate experience given that it's like a dating sim um at some of like the showcases that we've been to like different games and a tcaf um people would sometimes play it together uh it's like so there would be like like two or three people that would all be playing like one person would be controlling the game and then the other two would be like giving input and stuff like that and right kind of yeah like a whole group of people like pretty much playing it and stuff like that but, but like that was really cool like actually it's like oh say this like no no click this option <laughs> well it's almost like um you know when people get together to watch like reality tv or something it's like everyone has an opinion and it's almost trying to decide you know what's in the character's best interest um so it's interesting it's not a co-op game but people are kind of playing it together tcav is probably a great venue for this type of game as well because yeah. it does have you know more of a narrative focus um in terms of the storyline where did that come from was that just sort of whimsy because you could go anywhere with the game or was this based on something else that you guys had started oh um, no it was kind of just like we just came up with it i don't, <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it well the characters um, are a werewolf a ghost a vampire um a witch Is yeah right? a witch and what's the, the last one it, it's uh, there's no vampires in the game oh, okay. uh, so you're a ghost and the characters you can romance are a werewolf uh, a slime girl a medusa and a witch Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yes, very cool. I think I thought the Medusa was a vampire at first. Oh, that's nope. so cool, though. I really like the art style. It's very cute. Um, and I guess with, you know, working on a team and under a tight deadline, was this something where everyone had a lot of input into the story, or were you guys working on your own components on your own and then bringing it together? No, we had a we had an initial team meeting. Where it was the four of us, uh, me, Kiana, Yanni, and Shepard. Uh, we pretty much like came up with the whole story, came up with the characters, um, and established like what the game would be. Mm -hmm. uh, so like we actually had like a list of like different monsters like that we could potentially like let people romance, mm -hmm. and then so, like we decided on four so that like we wouldn't be overwhelmed. <laughs> Good um, choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like technically, we only got like two weeks to work on this. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and then. 
So like we had like a whole bunch of monsters and we pretty much like voted on which ones were our favorite and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. So it was a so bit of like, a democratic process, but you know, given two weeks, you have to. <laughs> yeah, like no one was like make really, some edits. Yeah, no one was like really in charge of the project. Like everyone had a say. Okay, and is this done on a certain kind of software or using a certain program? Um, we use Unity. Um, okay. it, we use Unity game engine with an extension called Fungus, which is pretty much like it makes making visual novels a lot easier because like the base is already there and then you can customize it however you please. Very nice, which yeah. helps with the two week turnaround for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, and is this the first game of this type that you've made or is this sort of an evolution that came out of you trying a lot of different programs and tools and this one no. just is the one you went with? Uh, last year, like my first year of the program, um, we had a nonlinear class like a nonlinear story class. And um, I personally, like, we all were in different groups at this point. Uh, but in my group, we made, a, uh, we made a fungus game as well with Unity and Fungus. Um, it was like a sci-fi nonlinear story. Oh, cool. OK. Yeah. Is that something it's that like, people could find online or? Yeah, um, I have a link to it on my website. Nice. Um, yeah, so we'll I make can make sure to link that up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. It's, it's like pretty rough <laughs> just saying. that's fair I mean you're a student you're not a full-time game programmer you know it, it's I think understandable <laughs> I'm impressed with the quality and I guess the polish um, on this game so I understand you're adding sound next I mean yeah. there's some sound effects in it but you're gonna be adding um, I understand like a soundtrack yeah great we're gonna have like some music and we're also like adding more to the story as well oh great okay cool yeah so it'll be longer that's exciting. Um, so again, this is something that you can go online and play right now. Um, mm -hmm. What's next for you? Do you have any other game projects on the horizon or is this your focus for now? Um, other game projects? Uh, I have like like one other like side project that I can't really talk about, but- um, <laughs> Shh, everyone as, has as, one of those. <laughs> like as everything, like as it always is. Like, it happens. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, this like this is a focus. And then I'm also doing like some portfolio work because my co-op term is coming up. So I have to like write, do some stuff for co-ops. I'm like writing short stories and stuff like that. Awesome. Um, yeah, just like, yeah. <laughs> and will that, stories, writing scripts. will that be your, your final year in the program? No, I, I still have two years. Oh, great. So okay. I'm going into my third year and then. Uh, I have do the whole year, then there's a co-op, and then there's fourth year. Wow, that's that's a lot of work, but it's exciting that you can make games along the way, and as you say, sort of build up a portfolio. I think, um, yeah, you know, more than any other industry, it's probably important in design and, and game dev. <laughs> Is there anything that you would um, sort of list as a particular challenge um, of working in the industry, or or I guess taking the path that you've taken? Is there anything that you found? particularly difficult or, or maybe even rewarding, but, but challenging nonetheless? Um, learning how to program like <laughs> has been a rewarding challenge. Like, um, like I went into this, uh, like this program, not knowing how to program at all. Oh, wow. I, I knew nothing. So like pretty much first year was like dipping my toes or rather being thrown into a pool. But, <laughs> um, uh, but it, like I've definitely learned a lot in yeah. like the last two years. Seems so, like you've like, scaled the learning curve really well. I mean, that's that's actually really encouraging for someone like myself who doesn't program. <laughs> yeah, no, it like it kicks you in the ass, but like once you like get like get an idea of what you're doing, then it's like it's definitely really rewarding because at the end of the road, you have like a, a functioning game. Absolutely. Yeah. So like we had like a sprint week game uh, like and we don't choose who's in our groups it's oh. like it's a school thing so it's like a game jam we do it in a week oh, cool. and um the teachers select the groups at random so um and no one in this group knew how to program <laughs> so or like not well so um it was pretty much like down to me and, and one of the first years uh to like program a large quantity a large amount of the game but like it ended up working really well. But the game's also on my itch. It's like Robo Buddy Rumble. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so like, but it, like it, it, we got it working. Like it was a working product. We didn't win, unfortunately. But um, 
it actually is a, a pretty complex little game. Like it's it's not like this game. It's very different, and it sort of showcases, I guess, yeah, your <laughs> at least your programming learning abilities, <laughs> um, if nothing else. It's uh, again, it's very encouraging to other people, but very impressive. Yeah. Um, is it something that you're going to keep pursuing then? And like, is programming something that you want to continue doing? Is that um, maybe not full time, but continue learning and sort of taking on as a challenge? Yeah, I definitely have like interest in continuing learning to program because it's useful, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in, especially in this field, like, it's like I can like land a hand and stuff like that. Like, I obviously can't like go to like a AAA studio and apply for a programming position. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not, I'm not at that level at all. Mm -hmm. But it's like I can do it. It's like I can help out if need be. And I, like, yeah, it's a major asset for an indie studio, I think, um, to have even just an understanding of some of the other roles on a team. Um, that's been my experience working at a small studio. Uh, you know, even yeah. minimal understanding really helps with the communication and collaboration. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Uh, I guess, you know, sort of on a final note, um, are there any games that, new or old really, um, but you would re sort of recommend to others, maybe something that's had like an emotional impact on you or just like a particularly memorable game? Obviously, there's this, the Assassin's Creed that got you into gaming, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything else, though, that you would really want to just recommend to other people or, or tell people to give a look? Um, oh. I always recommend Journey because, like, it makes yeah. me cry every time I play it. It's such <laughs> but, a beautiful um, game. Also, yeah, it is a really great game. And I also really like it because um, I do consider it to be a narrative game in spite of the fact that there's no dialogue, there's no words in the game whatsoever, but it tells a story through imagery and, uh, like, flashbacks, I guess you could call them that. Yeah, that's it's, like, interesting. It, yeah, no, it, it tells a story through, like, murals and stuff like that, and I think it's really interesting. And That's um like, yeah, and it's something that people don't often talk about in the game is sort of the the complexity of the story. I mean, visually it's beautiful, but as you say, it sort of has a lot of cues built into it. Um, what about any upcoming games? Anything that you're excited to try out, or something that maybe isn't available yet, but you've heard about and you just really want to get your hands on? Hmm. I really want to try. There's this game called Hellblade. It's by Ninja Theory. Mm -hmm. uh, that game looks really interesting because it tells the story of someone living uh, with psychosis and schizophrenia and that's a story that's not really told mm -hmm. and so it's like I'm definitely interested to see like how they do it how they pull it off like they the devs say that they've put a lot of research which is a good thing uh into like people like living with uh, those kind of mental illnesses mm -hmm. so like I'm I'm definitely interested to see how they portray that story and it doesn't look like you're going to be interacting with a lot of other characters aside from the person you're playing so it's like how it's like I'm excited to see how they're going to tell the story through like a like her mental illnesses and her just being by herself absolutely like, yeah it's definitely a game I'm looking forward to oh yeah totally yeah. me too that's a great choice well, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we'll make sure that people can find you and, and all these games that we discussed today um, easily online through gamedevcafe.com. Um, I guess in parting, uh, you know, the, the last sort of word that I'd ask if you had for people is if someone's looking at getting into a game dev program or a game design program sort of like yourself, um, do you have any sort of advice or anything that you'd tell them to sort of keep in mind as they... I don't know, sort of set out to pursue their game development goals? Um, I always recommend having a versatile portfolio. Like, if you're an artist, like, definitely showcase your art, but show that you can do other stuff, too. Mm -hmm. um, like, one example I gave to, like, someone at an open house is, like, she was an artist. It's, like, that's great, and definitely showcase that, but, like, show that you can do other stuff. I recommended that she do a physical game, like, create, a, like, a card game or a board game. Ah, nice. And so, like, it's like I can do other stuff too. I can design games, like, um, or like if you're a programmer, sure you can do other stuff too. Like again, like design a game. It's like it showcases that you're capable of doing other things, or that you're willing to learn that you're, like, that you can do other stuff and that you're not just stuck in like a role or whatever. Because once you get into the program, that's not going to be the case at all. It's like it's like I consider myself more of a writer and like narrative designer, but it's like I can't be stuck in that role for every game we make. For projects and stuff like that because we're not we're not able to we have to learn how to program we have to learn how to draw absolutely that's really good insight and 
something that I think may not be um, something that people are aware of when they are getting into the program. It's it's not as siloed and as niched as you might at first. Yeah, no, it's um, definitely <laughs> it's definitely like broad, like, and it it's a kind of a good thing that it's like you you've learned like a whole bunch of different areas because then you might discover something that you didn't know about and it's like oh I actually really like doing this like I found out that I kind of like doing rigging so it's like oh, hey. <laughs> Maybe I'll pursue that or like I'll do it like as a hobby or something like that. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really, really technical. That's why I like it. It's like so specific. I'm like, yes, take hours doing it. It's annoying when everything falls apart, though. <laughs> well, that's just it. You have the chance to experiment if you're in this kind of program. Um, very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Jen, so much. Yeah, um, yeah, if you guys want to check out the game, we'll probably do um, a bit of a playthrough um, of the game later on on our stream. So you can tune in and check that out. Um, I am Karina again for GameDevCafe.com. This has been uh, a look at Monster Girls Generations with uh, the fantastic Jen. Thanks so much, Jen. And thanks, guys, for tuning in. If you're watching, we'll uh, make sure to get some of your questions out to Jen later, and uh, we'll get this up on YouTube shortly. Bye. Yeah.